Oh, oh, hi, hi. It, it's me, RGB, fr from RGB TV. I, I, I wasn't expecting you. I was just planning on watching a game between Buell and Movie, a pro battle on Polypoid. If you, if you're wondering what the map Polypoid is, this is the map Polypoid. It's one of the ladder maps for the normal maps. And Buell and Movie met a couple days ago on the ladder and played a pretty good game. And I was wondering, you know what, Buell being a former professional player, I kind of want to have a look at what he plays like on normal maps. Now I do acknowledge that he's probably a little bit rusty on the normal maps because he's been playing almost only fastest map for the past few years and sometimes he just dip his toes back into the ladder maps and plays normal maps but yeah I really just want to see what it's like. Movie is a less active professional player. He hasn't really had a lot of success in the most recent years but he's still pretty damn good as a professional player. He's played in um, a lot of the Kespa era tournaments, had a uh, moderate amounts of success there, got some pretty good placements in some tournaments, and in the ASL era he also had some pretty good games going his way, some pretty good placings in tournaments, although I wouldn't say in the top 16, I think mostly in the top 26, which by itself is already very good because Buell has pretty much also only placed in the top 28 or 20, 24, that's it, in the top 24. See, so yeah, Buell here on the Terran at the top of the map, on all maps, there are a lot more intricate things going on. And actually, I should have pulled up that map again, so I can get a closer look at it. Actually, there's a command. Let me just, there's a command somewhere. Uh, let's hide that. So there's a way to show the entire map. So let me just show the entire map real quick to the people who are not familiar with the uh, professional maps. All right, let me just show that. So this is the second base that people take first, of course. Oftentimes they will wall off right here. Sometimes there's other wall configurations to keep the opponent out. He's gonna go for a very early... Might go for a barracks. Yeah, there's a barracks there up in the front. This gives him a little bit of offensive potential, but it's largely for defensive potential against specifically uh, Gateway. You gotta get that barrack out early, of course. Same as on the fastest maps. This is oftentimes the third base option. Notice that there's not a gas. So this is the second gas. And oftentimes they then go for a fourth base, either over here or over here, depending on what their plans are. And here's the Protoss, same story here. Second base, third base, fourth base. And this is of course a fifth base option and it might go to the other way of the map. So let me very quickly turn off the entire map. We have Movie going for a left side scout, and we have Buell going for a right side um, lateral, not a lateral, what do you call it again? Oh god damn. Vertical scout, that's it, vertical scout. And he finds him pretty early on, sees the gaster up on the map. He will see the zealot get out, which of course cues him in that he has to start getting up his own defenses. We don't see a cyber core yet here anyway from Movie, he will get it very soon. He queued up a second zealot, and of course, Bill wants to see whether a second zealot comes out because that will affect what movie can do. If he doesn't get a second zealot, he knows that movie is gonna go very hard on uh, range and dragoons after this. Maybe he might go for robotics before range. That's what some players do these days to get a faster robotics, a faster shuttle, and a faster reaver. He tries to block that zealot. It's a very good work right there. Marine is out there on the map, and he's using a my opinion, the most interesting wall configuration. Zealot cannot walk through here or through here, but the Marines can. So the Marines have a very safe position to micro back to. Gonna get a bunker up there in the front against Dragoons that will come up in the future. Will also make it easy to defend, because then you'll have to not focus on the micro. So yeah, Zealot, uh, second Zealot arriving on the scene. Tried to kill the SCVs, didn't quite work out. Gonna try to get in there yet again, but the Marines make their escape. This one is gonna get stuck, oh, dies. Gets one, Marine kill, gets one SV kill. Pretty good damage here by movie, but he's gonna have to do a little bit more than this. He's gonna walk all the way around, gets hit off on that SV. Gonna SV trying to escape, stays alive by moving to the left side there. Marines there in the back, gonna get attacked. The probe is helping out. The probe damage here is really helping out heaps. Look at the probe, getting a kill, heroic, heroic. Job. Another result there makes his way across the map. We've got Dragoon and Dragoon range both on the way. They are from Movie. He's still on one single base. They didn't build a second nexus yet. He's gonna go pretty hard on the aggression. 
as Biol now almost has his second commander up and running. Marine there stays alive. It, I think Biol took a little bit too much damage here because now the Zealots are on the SCVs there in the backside. And that is definitely not what you want because you're going to be losing out on minerals and maybe lose some SCVs as well. Going to lose another Marine. Oh, this is turning out very bad for Biol. He has to make another Marine. He would prefer to have not made this Marine, but he's forced to make that one as he keeps taking more and more damage. Factory now gets slowed down as well. That is a lot of damage being dealt there to be old. Definitely not looking that great yet for him so far. But he does manage to defend himself, and the bunker up in the front, of course, is going to allow him to defend himself. And there we have a second Dragoon, but now he skipped on a Dragoon to get a faster Robotics. Now, he didn't skip range to get an even faster Robotics. He went for a range Dragoon, Dragoon, Robotics, and then back to a Dragoon. He's keeping the Dragoon back at home. We have Factory almost finishing up there in the back. Movie knows that the Factory got significantly slowed down. He's going to go for a Machine Shop first. I'm not going to try to sneak through with a Vulture. Might go straight for Tank. Might go for a Vulture with Mines. Maybe Speed. Usually it's Mines, I believe. Got a... Academy are coming up in the back. He only has... Okay, he's, he's got four Marines in his bunker. He's playing it very safe. Sometimes players go for two in the situation or for three, which, of course, is skipping out on some defenses, but he's going to try to make this work with four. Basically, the maximum amount. It will prevent Dragoons from being over-aggressive. If you have got two Marines in there and the tank comes out and tank tries, the tank tries to fight against the Dragoons with some micro because the tank does outrange the Dragoons with regular range. He might try to overstep and jump on the tank to try and kill the tank, but not, that's not going to happen. So you got Siege One on the way and the tank on the way. I'm not going to see the Vultures today. We've got the comms there on the way as well and an Armory there coming up in the, on the side. So he has his very first attack upgrade coming up very soon as well. So he's got something to fall back on. There's going to be four Dragoons there hitting that bunker. Because Siege One almost finished up there. It's going to take a couple more seconds to finish up. And he's going to scare those Dragoons away. Now, there's still some room for Movie to move his Dragoons down to the south. Out of tank range, he'll hit that bunker. And that's what I think he's... He's not going to do that. Like, there's a spot right here where he can put his Dragoons and still fire on the bunker. And be outside of the tank range. And that would still force Biel to keep repairing. It would still soak up some minerals. But he's not going to do that. He's playing it very safe. He wants to focus on other things. Because Movie is not one of those very high APM Protoss players. We have the Reaver now on the way, and so is the shuttle. Do we have any turrets there yet for build? No turrets, no engineering bay. He had didn't build any additional marines, but he might build a Goliath because we have Cairn. We have Goliath range on the way. We got a scan coming down. He saw. Hmm, I'm not sure he saw that. I'm not sure he saw that. I think the Reaver shuttle just left. So yeah, he did not see the shuttle and the Reaver, but I assume he knows it's on the way. And he's building a Goliath to fight against the Reaver shuttle. But is Movie actually planning on flying into the base or is he going to try to poke you in the front? We got two Marines unloaded. They uh, are there on the bottom. He was expecting the shuttle to come over the south, but he comes in over the front side, gets him right on top of the tank. Tank will go down. Tank the Reaver takes one shot. They took some damage there. Goliath is on the map. On low, he's going to try to take down that Goliath. Reaver stays alive. Shuttle goes to the south where there's no more Marines waiting because they have to move to the front to repair the bunker. So he's up there in the back. Reaver is very far away. Going to try to shoot. Reaver gets taken down. He'll be done. Oh, that might have been a mistake there from the but he's going to keep on repairing that bunker. We got the tanks moving forward. One SV goes down. That was abysmal amounts of damage dealt there by movie. He got one tank got shut off on the goliath but didn't really kill a lot there so that's actually a pretty good defense there by Buell. he prepared himself from the shuttle coming over the bottom side did not come in for the front but everything worked out just fine but he's still i'd say a little bit behind on his enemy third next to their coming up uh getting a second gas he's on 48 pro looking pretty good gets another scan off there on he really wants to see if there's something else coming out there, but we have another show there getting into the base. There's a Reaver inside and two Zealots. Zealots, of course, going to be uh, unloaded to take some tank shots, just like this. Loads there in the back, gets a shot off on the tank. Going to try to get another shot off there on that tank. Takes down the tank, moving into the top side. Zealot unloads yet again to take fire. Reaver... Ooh, shoulder goes down. Reaver unloads. Reaver going to get taken down. It's going to get one more shot off there on the tank. Tank on the bottom side goes down to the Zealot. Oh, that one's actually pretty good. 
And once in the front, oh my god, took down the bunker. He caught Buell with his pants down, jumped on the bunker, bunker could take it down. And now the game is actually looking really bad here for Buell because now he's gonna have to pull this down. But he's losing SCVs, lost the bunker, lost the Marines. I think, I'm not sure how many SCVs he lost. I think he was on 48 or something, you know, back to 44. Level 1 attacker was almost finished up there for the mech, though. So that's looking pretty good, but still only on 3 factory. He's been taking quite a beating. He's taking quite a beating. Getting Engineering Bay now as well. Might get either a Wraith against the Shuttles, or he's going to go for a Science Facility to get level 2 attack. Because you need a Science Facility for level 2 attack. And you want to get level 2 attack as fast as you can. So that's why he's got a Science Facility there on the top. Got to get level 2 attack any time now. We've got more Goliaths on the way against the Shuttles. We have Dragoons there moving back from Buell. Just make sure that he's not going to move out. He's not going to push towards his third base. Because at some point he's going to have to want to take the third base. And Movie of course wants to make it as difficult as possible. We have not seen any offensive Vulture movement from Buell. And he would have loved to get some offensive Vulture movement out onto the map to kill some probes. And it has simply not happened. We've got 64 probes there from Buell, uh, from Movie, And he's m looking to start his fourth base already. See, the lead keeps growing for Movie. Now, six gateway, about the amount of gateways he can support at this moment in time. And then we have another Reaver shuttle. He never went for double Reaver in a shuttle. There's always been one Reaver, two Zealots. Interesting choice, interesting play. Level 1 attack on the way, and the Zealot Speed is also being researched in a level 2 attack there. There's a second army for level 1 attack, I mean level 1 defense. And that's his third commencer. He's going to fly it over and fly it to here. And he's going to try to push forward with his tanks, but he's only on one, two, three, four tanks at the moment. Went very hard on the Goliaths, though. He's really expecting very heavy shuttle play from Movie. But Movie has kind of been, I'd say, lowballing the Reaver investment. He's made three Reavers so far, lost two. So that's not a lot of Reaver investment from movies so far this game. He's just really been going extremely hard on the macro. Fourth base, uh, started that at 11 minutes in. 67 probes at 11 minutes, that's a lot. He's really going super hard on that economy. And Bill is trying to catch up, but he's going to have to move towards the third base sometime around at 12 minutes. Sometime at the 12 minute mark, he's going to, he's going already, flying it over. He's going to have to push his tanks forward and zone those Dragoons away, which are going home to intercept those Vultures, which are trying to get some damage out on the probes. He's going to try to maybe skip over, but nope, not going to happen. Dragoons have moved back. We've got the... Actually, now we have oh, six Zealots in two shuttles and a Reaver. So that's an interesting, interesting move. Really not committing to the shuttles anymore, but he's going to... After he gets the Tide Templars, I expect him to get a shuttle once again. He's at the moment making Observers to clear out mines because Buell did manage to get some units out onto the map. And because the Vultures are out on the map, the Dragoons pulled away, which gave Buell some room to mine up, push his tanks forward, and get his third base. Level 2 attack there, very close. Very, very close. We have level 1 attack there, finished for movie. He has double forge, getting armor and weapon, getting observer speed as well, and getting another four gateways there on the top. So he has... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gateways. Looking very strong in our production. With his 4 base 6, 7 probe, he can definitely support that many gateways. I wouldn't say easily. But oh boy, it's gonna be a macro nightmare for Bill. He's now on 5 factory, getting 2 more for 7. Upgrade. They're finishing up just on time, so this gives him a little more power to secure and defend himself, but I do expect Movie to get level 2 very soon and level 1 armor as well. And that should be a power spike it's looking for, or maybe it's looking for the power spike of Templar Storm to start to push onto this third base and break Buell once and for all. Another great pylon wall there, keeping those vultures out. He might try to skip over with a mine placement. He forces the Dragoons to go out and clear out those vultures. We saw a scan happen. I'm not sure where he scanned. I should have looked. I was a little bit too focused on something else. He goes in with a drop there, but oh, there's a lot of damage on the shuttle. He lul, Reaver and Lowe's. That's three Zealots. Gonna focus almost turrets, gonna try to get some supply deep damage as well, gonna kill those two. Might work, might not work. Vultures move to the top side to clear those out. The Zealots go down very quickly to the, to the Vultures. The Reaver, not as quick, but he gets one more shot off and kills two supply depots. That's, ooh. I would say that that drop was not entirely worth it. Lost six Zealots, two Shuttles, and a Reaver 
for two supply depots and maybe two vultures, maybe one vulture, not a lot. But it does slow down Bjol's supply progression, but he will finish those supply depots just on time. <coughs> so here comes the big attack he was looking for. Temple's on the scene, storms are using the front. Vultures are all still back in the main base. That's pretty, pretty, pretty inconvenient. Beautiful storms unloading on top of the tanks. Killed one of his own High Templars there though, but he breaks through the entire front line with the Dragoons and the High Templars. A Templar power spike in a shuttle is just so damn strong. And I, I want to under, I, I cannot understate how important it was for that earlier drop to pull all the Vultures into the backs of the main base so that they could not defend against all the Zealots, all the Dragoons and all the Templars alone here in the front. So that allowed him to really just hammer his fist right in there and absolutely destroy that entire tank line. Took down the third Nexus as well. Bill's economy is now suffering greatly because he just lost a lot of his mineral income. It's going to slow him down a lot. We can see a huge supply difference as well. Movie is breaking Bjol's back. Comes in yet again, unloading on top of the tanks with those shuttles. Beautiful unload, getting on top of the tanks. It's gonna break him. This is gonna be the GG. I do not. Oh, that's one high. Two high temples in there, storming on the vaults in the tanks. Takes a lot of them down. Another storm comes down. Triple storm cleans out the house. Movie just absolutely beasted on Bjol. And it all comes back to that pretty poor start by Bjol. And I also think that breaking the bunker in the front while he was microing here in the back with the Reaver shuttle, forcing Bjol to lose focus on his choke right here, I think that really was the nail. At that point, I don't think Bjol could really recover anymore. Movie was just snowballing, focusing on his economy. There's already a fifth base there on the way, only 15 minutes in. He was snowballing his economy so damn hard that he could just keep pumping out massive amounts of units with very little effort and he did have that level 2 attack and one armor finish up right as he went for that second attack right here after he landed those huge storms and broke Bill's defenses. So that's actually... <coughs> Wow, well, that's actually going to be the first game that I wanted to uh, cast today. Let's move over to game number two, which is going to be on the normal maps. It's going to be on the normal maps. Let me just change the title real quick, because we're going to be looking at the player called Cookie. Playing against Biel on fastest map, a map that Biel is, at this point in time, I would say a little bit stronger on. I would say a little bit stronger on the fastest map than he is on the normal maps. So let's just select the replay and dive right into the action. It's loading a little bit slowly, but let's go and see the action of this second game. I hope you enjoyed the first game. I don't really ever cast normal games. I think I've casted four of them in total so far. I must admit, I do lack some knowledge here and there to really bring out the most. Like, I want to go more in depth but i'm not really able to go that in depth just yet it's kind of just layman's interpretation of the normal game of the polypoid map but now we're back on a map that i specialize in it's fastest map but bill you're on the name a b c k s k s being the clan tag any cookie you're on the protoss brown protoss cookie the mysterious player appears on the playing field i don't think i've cast it Cookie before, but I think he is a very good player. He showed up. I'm not sure who he is. It could be Libaku, could be Meppo, could be someone else. A mysterious contender has arrived. And from what I've seen so far, he has played a lot against Burger Sasu, against Gunsan, and against uh, Biol, against JH, against Libaku. He's challenged every single player existing on the block. And I've liked what I've seen so far. I've liked a lot. Goes for a Dragoon Bull Order here. At least I think it is going to be a Dragoon Bull Order. I think it's going to be Dragoons. It could be something else. It could be very fast Dark Templars. It could be very fast Reaver Drop. I'm not too sure, but Dragoon Bull Order does seem to be the most common option when you go for a Simulator into a next into a Gateway. The most common option out of all the options. <coughs> <coughs> 
Hey, apparently my throat is not feeling that great. Apparently my throat is not feeling that great. So we have Bill here going for a double barracks bolt order and scouting with two SCVs out on the map. Wait, actually, he's gonna build a wall in the front, supply depot, supply depot, and probably a bunker. There's a configuration I often see him like to go for. Now, I don't think that this is a great option against his very early Dragoon stuff, because his gas is gonna be very late. And that means he's gonna get a very late range on his Marines. Actually, he's gonna reorganize and get a command center as well. Now, things are looking even worse here for Bill, because Dragoons are almost on the way. Cybercore is only seconds removed from finishing up, and the triple gateway there will soon fall in line as well. He's gonna send up one more Marine to scout the map. He's gonna I'm not sure where he's going to go. Maybe he's going to intercept the probe. Probe's going to try to make his escape to the north. So the probe is never going to get into the base. It might maybe swoop around, but I think its chances of getting in are very, very low. The Marines there retreating back to this choke point. We have double supply depot there in the front. Going to build a bunker there in between. I assume if he builds a supply depot, he is actually going to get screwed over pretty badly. And I think that Cookie likes seeing this. I think he really likes it. Also, only saw four Marines. That's more good news for Cookie. Because now he knows that Biol did not invest a lot of minerals into a Marine defense. And we do have gas on the way. Double gas, actually. But no academy there yet. It's going to go for a very fast factory. But the Dragoons, of course, love that. Because they're going to be hammering away at this front door. And there's not much that Biol can do against it. Although Biol finds it just on time. Sees the Dragoons moving out. And this is going to push Biol to into a sequence of choices and movements and actions that he's gonna have to execute perfectly, very quickly. We've got an academy on the way there in the back. The Marines are pushing the Dragoons away. The, these Marines at the moment, before Dragoon range kicks in, have some fighting power against the Dragoons. They can push them back for a little while, up until the point three more Dragoons arrive on the scene, and up until the point that Singularity Charge finishes up, at which point the Dragoons are stronger with their superior fighting power, superior range, and of course their micro power. Right now, Bill is buying time for his machine shop and for marine range to both finish. But first the factory and academy has to finish before he can even start those two. He's now going to be in a little bit of trouble for, I'd say, the next minute or so, where he's waiting for both range and machine shop and siege tank to finish up. So the goons are sitting there in the front and we have two more nexus coming out from Cookie who's switching over from a very aggressive early game into a very macro-focused economy build order. Okay, this one in the front is gonna go down. That one's gonna go down, way too much damage coming down onto those bunkers. He's got so many Dragoons on the scene. This one is gonna be fine though, although as if he goes down, there's a little bit of damage there being dealt already. Supply depot on the bottom is also exposed, so not looking too good here for him there. It might eat its supply blocks, Bill, but the tank got put into production just on time. Marine range is almost finished up there in the back as well, so it's gonna take a couple more seconds to finish up, like 10 seconds. Very aggressively moving forward, very aggressively. I actually think he could try to kill the front bunker and ignore the marine range, but he's gonna play it safe and hang back for now as we got us uh, robotics on the way there in the back and a citadel of a dune as well. Getting more pylons, of course, not getting any cannons yet. He's on 25 probes, and we have 25 SCVs, 28 SCVs there for Bjorn. He's now getting a engineering bay. We have a range finished up there for the Marines. We got siege mode almost finished up. He actually got the siege mode after marine range and after the tank because he didn't have the minerals or the gas to get it earlier. So the tank is going to be sitting here in the front. We've got Stim on the way, another tank there being built as well. He might go for a third commencer, although I do think that would be very greedy. But maybe he's feeling feisty and believes that, oh, yeah, you know what? I can go for a third commencer. Why not? I think you cannot hurt me. So we have got pylons coming up on the sides to spot dropships from flying out of the base. Likewise, dragoons existing here as well to get vision and to spot dropships leaving the base, but also to deny a lot of vision that Biel might build up on the sides, like floating engineering base, perhaps. Just limiting the playing field for Biel by using the dragoons very smartly, very wisely. We got the support bay finished up, we got shuttle speed on the way, and zealous speed on the way as well. Level 1 attack for gateway units, and getting a second robotics. We got a reaver in production. And triple nexus is gonna skyrocket his probe count rapidly. He's building a one cannon right at this point in time, because realistically speaking, Bill could have a starport finished at this point in time, 
and fly out a dropship with a tank. Maybe two tanks to hit those probes. So adequately, of course, he's getting those defensives up in the back, just in case a dropship flies through all this vision on the map. Just in case. Just to be safe. Because you never know. Things might just go wrong, and that might just lose you the game. So he's playing it very safe. Not taking any risks. Both players have shifted gears into economy class. As economy class, he's going hard on building up the mineral bank for mass production later on. Okay, we there coming up in the top there from Cookie. Interesting placement, interesting placement for sure. Stargate coming up as well. Uh, he's on three Robo now, getting more shuttles, getting more Reavers. We have a drop here on the bottom. There's sadly a couple of turrets there on the scene, so we cannot fly in over this pathway. There's an open hole right here. But we have Marines waiting to charge in with Stim and snipe down the shuttle. So he returns back home. Does not like the odds of succeeding with that shuttle. He's going to build a bigger shuttle drop, maybe add in a Corsair, although that would give Bill a lot of time to prepare himself against even more, uh, with more turrets and more Marines. He's going for a six Marine, six barrack defense on double engine bay. Which means he's going to get level 3 armor and weapon, most likely. Got no armory there in the back yet, so no level 1 attack there for the tanks coming up anytime soon. Splitting up his tanks all across the base to cover as much surface area as he can. Because Protoss can unload literally anywhere. Not just in the back, not just in the front. They can unload in the corners, in the middle, anywhere they want a Protoss can unload. Really, so much vision on the map here from Cookie. Literally vision everywhere on the bottom side. Nothing will escape his eye. So finds an engineering beta but retreats back because the tank is shooting on it. Very quick correction there from Cookie. I'm liking what Cookie is doing so far. There's a lot of restraint and control, but also a lot of planning going into his playstyle. He's not spending money unnecessarily. Everything has a purpose. And even if he made something that he no longer has a purpose for, he finds a new purpose for what he has built. Or so low on the top corner because there's a lot of turrets and no Corsairs. Two Reavers shooting on. Oh, a lot of Marines do go down. Zealots will clear out the tanks. This one Reaver might go down to the Reaver for the tank shots. Goes down. Marines coming in, swooping in from the bottom to the top, clearing out that entire corner. He gets about, I'd say, two tank kills and I'd say about 12 Marine kills and four turret kills. It's not a lot, but I'd say that is enough for now. It's something. It's not a lot. It's not a great success, but it's better than nothing. You gotta take what you can get. Don't try to push beyond your limits. Instead, know your limits and play exactly within the confines of your limits. Do not throw units away without a gain. So, one armor and attack on the way there for Bio. He's got level 1 attack on the Marines, finished up. Getting level 2 and level 1 armor. He's getting more factors now as well as he, is, as he is in 67 SCVs. He's got triple bunker in the back. Very wise choice, although the bunkers are kind of empty. Moving units in to fill them up. We got double Corsair escorting shuttles on the bottom side. Gonna try to snipe up shuttles. Turns the shuttles around. Almost on the high ground, storming on the Marines. Marines dodging the storms. Hits the tank there though, but nothing dies. Okay, two Marines died, but that's nothing to write home about. Right again from another angle. Tries again from another angle. Buell is not noticing this. Oh my god, he actually gets a storm off kills. 30 SCVs. Now that was a great adjustment from Cookie. Pulling back, unloading some high Templars on the high ground. Killing some Marines, some tanks, distracts. Forces Buell to focus on that high ground and it flies in with a drop while Buell was sleeping. His eyes closed. Did not see it coming in. Got tricked. Bamboozled. He got God. He got his ass spanked. But he's not in dark waters yet. Or maybe he is. He got 45 SCVs. He got a lot of supply though in army. And Marines coming in to snipe those shuttles. Shuttles are unloading, but the temples are too far away. Forge storm on the Marines. Marines do go down. Beautiful triple storm. It's a lot of Marines. More than 24 Marines do go down. That was a successful drop. He didn't kill the SCVs though, but killing 24 Marines with a drop, that is great. Because that of course means that the next drop is going to be a little bit easier than the one before it, because there's simply less to snipe the shuttle out of the sky. Now we do have four armory there though from Biel. He's got four commencements as well, so he's recovering his SCVs rapidly. But another drop there comes in already. 
over the same spot as last time. A wide open hole. Green stimming in. And look at this. Only like 20 Marines to defend. Unloading. Templars do unload but at the start. So the SVs are safe yet again. And he kills, I'd say, about 12 Marines yet again. But this time around, I would say that was definitely a win for Bill. Because now his SUVs are in a healthy place, he's got raids in the sky as well, and tanks are splitting up all over the place. Tanks are splitting up all over the place. And with that 6 barrack production, the marines are coming out very rapidly in large numbers. So his supply is recovering back to 150. Got 169 there for Cookie on 91 probes, which overshoots the mark by a little bit. But I don't think he cares too much. At least, not yet. At least, not yet. As long as he can keep throwing out great shuttle drops and keep peeling away at Beal's defenses, he's gonna be happy about this. So a good unload there on the high ground, pulls the shuttle back home to load up more. He's got five shuttles with units waiting to fly in with two courses to escort. Okay, make it four because he's leaving one soldier back at home for the next drop. He's building a large carrier proxy base with uh, a lot of Stargates here for a lot of carriers. So he flies in over the exact same spot yet again, flies over the barracks yet again. One Templar went down at the start, unloading. One High Templar arrives on this two. Both get sniped, but one more on the scene. Gets a great storm off, and he kills a lot of SCVs. Yet again, 20 kills on that one High Templar. There's so many High Templars in that drop. He did manage to snipe three High Templars before they could storm with the fourth one. He wasn't expecting it. At the end, great unload, kills the SCVs. So yet again, he gets a reset, gets pushed back just a little bit, but he's recovering quite easily quite easily, but now he also has the raids to snipe shuttles out of the sky with single volleys. But I still have no upgrades though, it's still 0-0, zero, zero. and we have on those air units from Cookie, 1-1-1, one, one, one. and on the gateways we got 1-1-2. One, one, Very good upgrades from Cookie, looking strong, getting mind control as well, getting mind control as well, and he has a pretty good amount of gateways, like at, uh, it's 10, 17, ooh, we're on 22 gateways. Drop comes in yet again, same spot, flies in, rates swooping in, taking on the shuttles with ease. Gets stormed there though, just a little bit, loses some HP, but that was a great anti-drop from Bill. Now Cookie though, Cookie though, Cookie though is on 97 probes. That is way beyond the ideal mark, the ideal number of probes. So his army is actually pretty small, and that's going to affect the amount of carriers he'll have, or the drops he can fly out. He's going to have to kill at least 20 SCVs, maybe even 30 probes. 30 probes will have to go to open up space for his army. Because at this point in time, with 72 SCVs, Bill's army is simply much stronger. Although it consists largely of marines, it's largely marines, but he's adding on more factories so he can switch over to a full-on Tank, Goliath, Vulture Army, anytime he wants, after those factories finish up. Stimming into that 9 o'clock base to clear out those cannons before they finish up and protect this Stargate base. Zell's coming in from the back, so this will, this will save this entire proxy base. Moving to the 3 o'clock as well to take down those cannons that are limiting his playing space. Biel is going through all the motions quite nicely. Now he's keeping a couple of barracks here on the ground so he can build ghosts in the future, something he really likes to do. They're already in production. As the covered ops, he's gonna get a lockdown, he's gonna get energy, he's gonna get cloak and range for those ghosts over time as the game goes on. How many carriers do we have? Six carriers entering the middle of the map. We have a couple of courses to escort them. And still on 96 probes. He's spending his money so quick that he's not noticing he's got way too many probes. Sometimes you just don't notice because you're spending money too damn fast. And Cookie is spending his money too damn fast. Everywhere, all over the place. Look at how many upgrades he's getting all at the same time while fighting here on the middle, pushing forward. Now he's on 10 carriers. That's a pretty strong fighting force. He's got a lot of corsairs as well and a lot of observers. So this is a carrier force to be I wouldn't say scared of, but to at least acknowledge as a potential potential threat to your well-being. Raids in the back, waiting to go in, but we have Corsairs, we have raids that are not great against Observers and Corsairs. Oh, snipes, two Observers, but one more Observer coming in. Corsairs ready to snipe the raids, raids are gonna die, though they make their escape, but ooh, they took a lot of damage there, very quickly, within the blink of an eye. Flies back in, kills another Observer, this time around, 
No observers on the scene. He's gonna have to pull this one there to the bottom. Nope, not gonna happen. Oh, the courses are hitting themselves, and by hitting themselves, they're hitting the rates. And the rates got demolished. Four stayed alive, four survived. Very low HP. Now he does have six, st uh, five star points. Comes in yet again, another observer arrives on the scene. How many carriers are still alive? He lost only two of them. Almost three, almost three. Horses push forward. Wraiths got killed, murked, destroyed, flies in even deeper. Goliaths are shooting on the carriers. One carrier gets locked down, another carrier gets taken down by Goliaths. Six carriers arrive on the scene and they're trying to do some damage, but this is not gonna work. This was not a great choice. Carriers are getting absolutely destroyed and they make their retreat. Licking their wounds, not looking too healthy, not looking too healthy, kind of looking beaten up. So he's got 2-2 two, two, Wonder on the air units, and for Biel we have 2-2 two, two on the ground, and the Goliaths, the Goliaths and the Ghosts are in 1-3. Three. Level 3 attack, already finished up, very strong Ghosts. He's going to just throw away his low HP carriers, because why would I even meet those? Just throw them away and build new ones. And I really hope he's gonna kill some probes at some point. His economy is not looking too good. It's not looking too good. He's trying to buy a little bit of time there with these carriers, which is not really working out too well for him. Those gateway units are on 223, so if he switches over into a gateway force, he might be able to fight this tank army back. It's gonna be difficult though. Getting double tribunal. You're on this top base, a lot of Stargates building carriers. He's trying to buy so much time, because he has to. He killed a lot of his probes. Okay, he killed almost 40 probes. He killed 36. So he has a lot more supply space now to fight with a bigger army than before. And will that bigger army be enough to push Buell back where he came from? Will it be enough? I'm not too... Drop arrives! Yes, so many High Templars! Five High Templars storming everything to Kingdom Come. That is the entire mineral income bank gone. All the SVs on the minerals, dead and gone. Down to 33. Now he does have some minerals in the bank to recover his SV count pretty quickly, but he's also losing his army on the mill at the same time, which will cost him a lot more minerals to recover than those SVs. So it's now looking like a tough, difficult game for Biel. Now my advice to Biel here would be, it would be, to move all those SCVs from the gas to the minerals. Just to speed up the recovery a little bit faster. Just to speed it up. So at this point, he's got a lot of gas, but he needs a lot of minerals as well. But you know, it's five command centers. He's recovering quickly, already back to 50 from 33. So give him a minute or two and he'll be back on 70. Like two more minutes, he'll be back on 70. But Cookie, of course, is not planning on giving him those two minutes. He's planning on ending the game right here, right now, because he just got himself an advantage over Biel by killing his economy. He is liking his odds. The chances of winning are pretty high. Raids are flying all around. We got the courses on the hunt. Corsairs. Ooh, beautiful fight there happening on the side. We got Dark Temples in the middle as well. No vessels. Scans coming down, but the scans are a little bit too late because Dark Temples are wrecking everything. And now Biel is actually in trouble because he has a lot of gas. And as I said before, not all the minerals. So he's rapidly losing units all over the place. The raids got killed by the Corsairs, and now they got to kill more raids because they arrived inside of Bill's base. And we have a lot of observers as well. The Dark Templars are still alive, still wrecking whatever they can. Tanks are spawning. Bill's minerals are very low. And we, looks like he killed even more probes. He killed even more probes. Now only 40 probes stay alive back at home of which not many are on the minerals. He's banking on the carriers finishing the job. But Bill has like 10 ghosts with energy waiting to come to the top side and lock down the carriers and buy himself some time to recover that mineral income. He's down 74 SCVs. His income should be recovering within the next 20 or so seconds. More lockdowns happening, but we've got Dragoons joining the party. He's using all that opened up supply to make gateway units. And that might just be what breaks Biol's back. Because the Dragoons, combined with those carriers, are breaking everything down. The lockdowns are not enough. The raids got taken down. More lockdowns happening, but the Dragoons are overpowering his entire frontal section. Cookie gambles everything he had 
on a mass attack, and it's working out. It's working out beautifully. He's gaining so much ground. Look at how many carriers are locked down. Actually, actually, there is a chance that he might survive this. Although, the carriers might be in lockdown, there's actually nothing to kill them. Arbiter arrives as well. Oh, this is going to be a difficult one. This is going to be a difficult one. More carriers arrive. So many observers! Oh my god. Ten observers. Raids are just not going to do anything at all. Now, all the ghosts have used their energy. He's got four more ghosts on the bottom waiting for more lockdowns, but... He's just getting overpowered with pure muscle. Pure muscle just pushing forward. Always moving forward. Never giving up. Never relenting. Yet as the tanks go down, the Zealous and Dragoons will have free play inside the house. And look at how many more Dragoons are coming across. Look at how many more Dragoons are coming across the map. Carrier is just hanging in the middle on whole position. He's trying to snipe the Arbiter. Yes, the Arbiter. But just look at how many observers there are. The race don't stand a chance, although they do kill a carrier. Might even kill two. Kills two of them. Kills three of them. But it will not be enough. It will not save his life. His life is forfeit. Cookie did not crumble. As it did the A, B, C. One, two, three. It's you and me. As he sings Michael Jackson's song for the Jackson 5. To victory. GG is called there by ABC. Biol taps out. Cookie stands victorious. Definitely did not crumble. So that's for today. Hope you enjoyed the normal map on Polypoid between Movie and Biol and the subsequent Cookie against Biol on the fastest map, where he sadly also got destroyed by Cookie. A very methodical and smart player, really liking how this cookie plays. He's an amazing macro player, very smart player, has great setups for everything he does. I am honestly a little bit impressed by Cookie's performance. I like, I like what I saw. And I hope you did too, so leave a comment if you did, leave a like or something else. We're going to be seeing you next time for the next video, which should be coming up sometime soon. Have a great, great week.